Today marks the 29th Sunday of Ordinary Time, year A, 2023. This Sunday is also called Mission Sunday. We are reminded of what to do in relation to our responsibilities as Christians here on earth. Based on the inscriptions on the coin presented to Jesus, why did Jesus say, render to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and render to God what belongs to God. As they say, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. In this context, it means that the Pharisees and the Herodians had different political inclinations because the Pharisees did not support Caesar, whereas the Herodians supported Caesar, who was with the Romans. Therefore, coming to Jesus as their common enemy showed some fake or superficial friendship to trap him. Truth be told, the two groups posed the question to Jesus, but at the back of their mind, they had a different motive, the motive to trap him. The closed-ended question that was put to Jesus by the Pharisees and the Herodians reveals the trap that was intentionally and carefully executed. The question was, is it permissible to pay taxes to Caesar or not? If Jesus answered yes, he would be accused of collaborating with the Romans by the Pharisees. If he responded no need to pay taxes to Caesar, he would be accused by the Herodians as defying the Roman rules. Therefore, how did Jesus handle this kind of dilemma? There are three ways in which Jesus handled this particular dilemma. One, using wisdom and discernment to discover their motives. A story is told of a bachelor, meaning the one who is not married, went to borrow some money from his friend, but he told him that the reason for borrowing that particular money was to facilitate for the burial of his mother who had died in the village. However, it was discovered later on that he needed money to organize for his wedding. Unfortunately, some months later, the mother heard about it, what the son had done, collected all the money, pretending that the mother has died, and when she heard about it, she collapsed and died. He had a hidden motive for borrowing this money. Jesus discerned and discovered the intentions of the Pharisees and the Herodians who wanted to trap him. Are you a student? Do you ask some money from your parents that you will use as pocket money or for other things. The second strategy that Jesus used to handle this dilemma was the response with an agreeable alternative. They came with a closed-ended question, meaning a question that needed a yes or no answer. In order to understand this response from Jesus, I can borrow an image of a cow when a farmer wants to get hold of a cow, he will not hold it by the tail. He will not hold it by the legs, but he will hold it by its horns. It was an agreeable response that appeals to the two sides so that they could be satisfied, both of them. The final response from Jesus was, he used what they had to answer them. It was not a far-fetched answer, but a practical response from what they had, and it was the coin that they had. What catches my attention that can form part of today's meditation is the image that was on the coin. It was the image of Caesar, and therefore Jesus answered them, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and give to God what belongs to God. What does this mean to us today? There are songs and many, many interpretations that this response of Jesus 
can be uh, understood. For example, give to Caesar means paying tax to the state, whereas giving to God would mean giving offertory in church. Yes, I agree with them, but that is not the only interpretations because there are two interpretations about this response from Jesus. One, it means a Christian's responsibility as a citizen of this earthly city, as St. Augustine would put it. Furthermore, the responsibilities of each and every Christian here on earth includes paying taxes that will be used for the development in a country. By the way, did Jesus Christ pay tax while he was here on earth? Yes, he did. Let me show you. When he directed Peter to go to the sea, and the first fish he would fish out contained a coin, and that coin was used to pay the temple tax. Matthew chapter 17 from verses 24 to 27. Second, the image of Caesar on the coin reminds us that as human beings, we are created in the image and likeness of God. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. I would like to expand on this second point about the image on the coin that reminds us that we are created in the image and likeness of God. The inscription of an image on something like for the case of a coin, it means it belongs to that person. In the same way, since the inscription of God's image and likeness is in us, therefore we belong to God. Which image and likeness are we talking about here? It is not the physical image of a person, but we are talking of a person who does justice. The person with the image and likeness of God is the one who has love. The person with the image and likeness of God is the one who loves one another, forgives, lives well. That is the person who reflects the image and likeness of God, even in the family. On the contrary, violence and war disfigure man's image and likeness of God. Revenge damages the image and likeness of God in a person, and misunderstandings destroys the image and likeness of God in a person. 1. Inscription of Caesar's image on the coin reminds us that we are created in the image and likeness of God. Let us not disfigure it by sinning. Second, as Christians, we have responsibilities on this earthly city, such as paying taxes to the authorities, of which will be used by the state to develop the country. To conclude, on this 29th Sunday of Ordinary Time, year A, 2023, let us pray for missionaries, because it is a Mission Sunday today that we are celebrating, so that Missionaries can carry out their work with courage, with hope, with trust, and faith in God. Amen. Have a blessed Sunday.